Morning. Who's there? Say hello. Morning, Elaine. Morning, Lee. Come on, don't be shy, say hello. Hello Claire, hi Christine, hi Diane, so this morning we're going to look at the, hi Bev, hi Jean, we're going to look at the Indigo Blue One Day Special that Kay's launching tonight on her Chanda at 6pm. So Kay's doing the shows tonight uh, at 6 and 8 and then I'm taking over tomorrow doing 8am early, um, 12 noon and 4pm. Um, so you'll see between us, I mean Kay's obviously been doing um, fabric painting for a very long time and I'm a absolute beginner I've done it once before um, before I started working on these shows so um, you'll you'll see it from an export expert point of view and a total beginner point of view so I hope that's going to be useful to those people who haven't necessarily had a dip into uh, fabric painting and um, there are some absolutely stunning samples from the uh, bluebirds as per usual um obviously you know i'm just in awe of the samples that they produce um i wish i could do those but obviously i've got limited time anyway so um i'll just be dipping in here and there we do a little bit of fabric painting and we'll also be doing some stamping and we're going to be doing that today but i thought what we'd start with is actually just give you a heads up as to what actually is in the one day special so that as soon as Kay goes live you can get your orders in and then you can sit back and relax because then you know you've got it morning my sweetness um right okay so uh, mr m so what we've got is in the one day special we've got this beautiful uh panel now if you've done the uh dirty weekends last year you will actually recognize this this panel is the one that we worked on uh with the canvas bag last year in Kay's um workshops and it is just ever so slightly smaller than the one that we put on our canvas bag just because you don't just get this within the fabric you also get um some of the new images that are on the botanists um stamp set which is a new stamp set which i'll show you shortly and they've got there are obviously um herbs and kind of um for sort of herbal uh, remedy kind of herbs so you've got valerian we've got lavender we've got the neroli uh we've also got on the other side uh we've got this beautiful bird here um hope, hopefully you can see that uh, he's beautiful um Carolyn's done a fantastic, some of the others have done a fantastic job at colouring this in. Um, I'm not brilliant on shading, so mine's a little bit heavy, but I'll show you mine in a moment. So there's that one. There's this gorgeous, gorgeous butterfly, and I think most of us have actually made cards out of this. But cards, you, you, you cards you could actually... Um, uh, put into a frame and put onto a wall um, just stunning stunning butterfly this is a, a, a quite an iconic image that, that Kay's used quite a lot we've also got some sentiments on there every day holds the possibility of a miracle we've got the milk thistle which I'm going to be using today both in stamp form and the fabric uh, piece and we've also got um, if we move down here in the middle We've got um, plant seeds, 
plants seeds of happiness hope success and love we've got a bee which is like the bumblebee that's on the collector's edition stamp uh, we've also got the grunge dragonfly which i had on recently as well as the bee and we've got a smaller bee here now the bees are really useful to use as additions with your um other pieces um, so there's quite you can see there's, there's there's a lot on this panel if you're a total beginner I would definitely start with the smaller images uh, and I will show you in the shows uh, you know starting with like the the blog post that I did yesterday I will probably start with the valerian because it's a really good one to to, to kind of start fabric painting with without making it kind of scary and I would if you're not used to it I would actually keep this one till last when you've hoped your skills because it's such a beautiful panel um that it'd be a shame to waste it incidentally and i know carolyn's done this i think it's carolyn anyway you don't have to use the whole panel you can cut it down into sections and 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 you know pick little parts out you don't have to have it as is anyway that's your beautiful piece of fabric really good quality fabric and you also get this substantial canvas bag which is quite a huge one. It's got a good old gusset um, to it. Um, it's not going, it takes heat. So if you're putting, popping your paint on there, it will take uh, heat. It won't singe or anything like that. But obviously be careful. Don't kind of just concentrate your heat in one place. It's like I say, it takes the paint absolutely beautifully. If you're painting your bag, I suggest you put um, either plastic or cardboard inside so that the color that you're painting on the front doesn't go through to the back. Um, so there's your canvas bag paint it or not you don't have to paint it if you don't want to it'll be yours obviously and then also in the one day special kit you've got four new paints in fact I'll turn them that way so you can see the colors I've only got these yesterday so mine I haven't even opened yet uh, which I probably ought to uh, so the colors are 22 karat gold you've got your uh, Rossetti red You've also got your uh, fresh cut grass and you've got the blue, which is C, no, Sargasso C. Hmm, that's going to be a bit of a tongue twister for me. Um, so these are great core colours because obviously you can make lots of other colours out of them. Um, so that's your one day special. But as usual, I don't know what they've called it. They've probably called it the big kahuna. There's a bigger, there'll be a bigger bundle to uh, purchase from as well. So in the bigger bundle, you've also got this. I know you can't, I haven't got a picture because we just get, when they're hot off the press, we just get the rubber. Uh, I will show you a sample in a moment. This is up the wrong way. Uh, this is your fox glove and it, and it's got loads of kind of um, splats and scripts there's a paint brush there's also a pencil there's loads of cogs the word fox glove but but loads of a really good it's it's the sort of stamp i love because it's got lots of background going on with it so it's it's like an all in one if you like so that's a dl size so that's a huge huge stamp then you also get um the uh, botanists and uh, sorry about my acetate it's a bit dirty you get the botanists stamp set so the not that one um but the images that you saw so you've got the neroli you've got the clover in fact that that's not a separate image on the um fabric that but that is on the um, big panel um, you've got the lavender the valerian and the milk thistle so you've got five stamps within your kit I'm not sure when you because we didn't get our scrolled but um, when you get yours uh, I, I, I'm thinking that the, the words will still be part of your scrolled um, um, stamp plate um, but anyway those are your five five stamps so that's your big kahuna I think it will be called so anyway, that's that's all the stamps. There are lots of other stamps on the show too. If I pull in some of my samples. So this is the first one that I did. You know, so it's um hi Heather, hi Nora. Um so yeah, so this is like I was saying, the Valerian, really easy to to colour in. 
a spread you know I'll show you how to do this um, but a small piece and then you can just glue it onto a card with some of the other stamps around the edge easy peasy no problem at all then this is what we're going to I'm going to show you how to do this is just a stamp um, stamp background and um, just a bit colouring that's the milk thistle then uh, I've stamped the lavender and this, I will. Sh this is a, one of my demos. This is actually some of the outlying areas of your fox lob stamp. So it says fox there, so you can use that for a background. Then there's the lavender uh, panel itself, and I've stamped this, the lavender stamp in the background too. Then there's that beautiful butterfly. This is just a piece of art. It would look beautiful in a frame, I think. It's it's just absolutely stunning. And the paints are just, I mean, they are multi-surface paints. Don't get them on your clothes. Once once it's dry, you know, it's not coming out. Um, but you can move it around until it is dry. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Love that. Then, then the Roly, this is one of the first ones I did as well. Really simple, easy, easy bit of painting. Uh, then the Fox Club stamp. This is on my blog today. You'll find me on, uh, I think it's Julia Watts Crafts UK blog or something like that. I don't know. Just put my name in the search engine. Um, there's also a link on my Facebook page as well. So you can see uh, we've got all those background elements which are absolutely cool on the stamp and the main Fox Club as well. And I've also added one of the fabric bees in here beautiful stamp love that stamp and then this is my version of the um the bird that's on the fabric the fabrics the the, the fabric paint's really cool because uh, as i said until it's dry uh it's it's it, it you can move it so if you you paint with it and then spritz then it starts to bleed out and then when it's dry you can go in and add the more intense colors and this is the larger bee that i've added on here and there's some i don't know if you can see there's some fabric sparkles on the wings and one of the sentiments if you put uh if you mix some of the matte slap it on um with some water to dilute it down and then paint your fabric with it then you can actually cut the fabric and it won't fray so it's a really cool thing to be able to do and to add your sentiments on as well so those are my few samples, um, just me kind of playing around, getting to grips with what I'm doing. So we'll actually make something now. So I've got my little packets. Don't know what I've forgotten to pull out. This is very getting things together last minute. Right, so we've got, I've cut my panel out. Put those to one side a minute. And that's that's just straight from the straight from the fabric. So oh, I haven't shown you this. Let's show you this. In fact, I've got two here. So this is the fabric panel that I did when we did the dirty weekend. This was last June. Um, so this is with Kay's tuition, and of course I forgot completely which order we did things in. So when I I've done one, I've done it totally different. Probably wrong, but anyway. But you can see it's it's it's. It's a really, really pretty um, uh, panel. You can add fabric sparkles, a little bit of gesso for highlights. Um, I'm not sure if the gesso stays true if you wash it, actually, because all the fabric um, paint, all the, the multi-surface paint, will um, you can wash it at 30 degrees and it will stay true. Um, but, you know, I haven't done anything with this. It's just beautiful. I know my daughter, when she did it, she decorated the whole bag to use separate and she was going to frame this. Whether she has or not, I don't know, but um, it's just really lovely to look at. And this is the one I'm working on now. So, of course, I totally forgot the order in which I did stuff. Uh, so I think with Kay, what we did was we wet the panel and then painted areas in. And of course it bled and then we went in when it was dry and added the highlights and then we added the background afterwards last. I think that's the way we did it. I don't know. I don't make notes. Um, but with mine, with this one, I thought, I know what I'm doing. I'll do some little ones and I know what I'm doing. So I, I went in and I painted all the background. Of course, because we're using translucent paints, it does mean that when I go in, if I go in with yellows and things on top of blue, it might be a bit difficult. Having said that, I did 
obviously think about it around the butterfly and I put the and the dragonfly and did put lighter colours there. So it might be all right, but I will be working on this during the um one day special, uh, just adding little bits to it. So we've I mean it is quite a long project to finish. Um I mean you could just leave it, you don't have to paint it in if you don't want to, it just looks lovely as it is, and obviously fray the edges. I can't cut straight as well as not being able to stamp straight or or whatever. I can't cut fabric straight either. But anyhow. Uh, that's me that to one side right so we're going to work on this and um, there are some paint mats on the show but I'm going to use my deflecto thingy I've got, this has got a lid to it I bought this when I bought my bucket as well I used my bucket last week so this has got a lid to it so I think this is quite good I mean it it's quite flat so what you could do you know if you've ever seen Kathy uh, from Pink Ink Design to do her background you could put some water down paint in here and then dip your fabric in here because it's flat and then if you've got oops, sorry you've got somewhere to, to um, hang it um, then that would work really really nicely I've got anywhere to hang mine but um, the idea is that you can put your paints in here and seal it and then you still use your paints but uh, I've not found that a hundred percent they probably last a little bit longer um, but certainly not overnight they don't stay but um, anyway so I'm going to just use this because it's easier for me in the setup where I've got no room so we're going to use some of the paints that are on the show and um, try and think about what colour background we're going to use I think we'll go with the let's go with pur uh, no not purple rain let's go with the bluebell which is a they're all translucent paints and the, there's there's kind of several a couple of different sets of six and then there's the new set of four that's in the one day special. So I'm just going to pop far too much into my middle tray there. And add some water. Let's remove my samples out of the way before I put water, um, paint on them. No room, no room. Let's water that down a bit. Hopefully you can see, yeah. They are really intense, highly pigmented, these um, paints. So I've watered it down in there. And we're going to also spritz this as well, so um, so it's nice. and you can, you can do it the other way around. I'm going to do it this way around. I might regret it, but I'm going to do it this way around. And because it's going to take a little while to dry, we're going to work on our stamped piece as well. So you can see it's quite light. And it will spread because the fabric's wet it will spread it's not rocket science is it it doesn't matter if you go over a little bit i don't want any white edges though and i don't mind if it's patchy either Using my milk thistle. these are the same images that are on the stamp set so, of course, you can stamp onto fabric as well. Uh, I know Pink Ink do sell the microfiber um, fabric. Or I know Kerry's stamped on an old uh, pillowcase. So if you're stamping, you can stamp with uh, VersaCraft, which will be permanent once you've heat set it with, with an iron or a heat tool. Um, and you can also stamp with the paints as well. Right, so we just... This is a cool thing, actually. If you, it's a piece of rice paper here, obviously lots of different colours on it. What I did with mine, <laughs> stupidly or not, was I picked it up and I thought, I know, I'll put it onto a piece of rice paper and then it, and then any excess paint will sink into the rice really cool and I won't waste any uh, paint. But if you've got, um, like on my rice paper, I've got distress inks as well as paint. Obviously, distress inks are water reactive, and so what it does is it, it pulls up some of the colour from down below. I can see it pulling up a little bit down there, a little bit of yellow, and so you get a mottled background, which is quite cool in its own way as well. But we're not going to do that for now. I'm just going to mop up the excess onto my rice paper. I probably ought to use a clean piece at some point. And you, you is see see that's yellow there. I quite like that. I'm quite happy with that. We can actually heat set this, so I'll start it off so it starts to 
to go and I've got a little bit coming out there as well so so I mean that fabric was literally on that rice paper for I don't know a minute at the most probably 30 seconds and it's already started cut, pulling the colour out um, whether it stays permanent or not I don't know I, I, but I mean this is going to go on a card so it doesn't really matter does it what you will find is, is if you're heat setting on your craft sheet that the fabric will sweat a little bit. So let's grab a piece of tissue. So underneath here, it's now wet. So you need to bear that in mind. So, you know, kind of lift it up and turn it over and, and heat from the other side. And it will um, lighten as well. But of course if you're not happy with that colour you can actually put some more colour on once it's dry it's you can go on and watercolour and do other things with it actually let's let's continue with this i think we'll continue with this one because otherwise i'm going to get in a bit of mess with the space try not to put creases in it of course you can iron it if you want to that's not happening in my house okay that'll do that feels pretty dry now you can see it's really lightened and it's funny because the extra little bits of um, ink that I've picked up have actually come through quite dark I quite like that it's quite quite distressed I quite like that All right so then we'll do a little bit of colour painting so let's actually let's try one of the new colours this is your fresh cut grass so they're coming in these little pots which are 20 mil but you really don't need very much at all hi Marie watch when you open them sometimes they spit at you move a little bit over here so we can see where we're going I'll just take it from the actually I need a thinner brush than that oh, mess. I've got some really tiny brushes in here That's, uh, uh, can't find them when I'm looking for them that's quite a pointy one It's a very thin one. Let's go with that one. Actually, where's that one? Let's pull this out here first. I am going to just water it down ever so slightly just so it moves. That's far more than I need, but it's alright because I can use it on a background or something. This is your this is the one that's in the um, one day special bundle. Give it a good old mix. Space, if you just see my desk. Oh. Right. Actually I do need a fatter one as well, don't I? Talking to myself. Right. So when we're going on now. give it a mist as well it might seem weird that I've just dried it and now I'm misting it but I dried it to secure the, the, the blue background paint rather than worrying about um, you know it being completely dry so I'm just going to add some I'm not worrying about it being perfect because I'm trying to be quick because I realise that colouring in isn't the most exciting thing in the world to watch. How are we all anyway? Getting back to normal. Doesn't feel like we can get back to normal though yet, does it really? I think still I'm still I'm still quite apprehensive about going out to shops and things I don't want to do it now remember once it's dry 
you can't move it so if we now spritz that with a little bit of water it will start to bleed out of its um, uh, lines which which is is why you don't need to stress too much about being brilliant at painting it because we're going for a, a bit of a um, what's the word a bit of a distressed look anyway which is quite handy seeing as I'm trying to do it quite quickly I need some more paint let's see whether I've got any there we go I am a little bit heavy handed with this and I, like I say I'm a complete and utter novice at this let's give it a little bit of a spritz again where's my spritzer there it is that moving and you can you can do it a bit too much remember it, it's wet underneath so it's probably a good idea let's just grab a piece of kitchen roll because because you want to move your work around so that it's accessible but if you move it around when you've got paint on your mat then you're going to get green paint where you don't want green paint as, as I found out when I was doing this and I suppose the bottom of the thistle is going to be green as well, isn't it? I'll put a little bit down there. I, d I haven't waited to the end to spritz because if you do that, then um, some of it might be dry already. Let's give that another little bit of a spritz around there. Let's just do the stem. Oh, thinner paintbrush. Some pits on the top. Hi, David. Hopefully, you've got your stance now. Jean, you should have yours as well. At least I did post them. Okay, so that, that's looking a little bit movie. So then we go in, we pick some purple up, and we have got, let's use Purple Rain, which is a lovely deep purple. And we'll do the thistle with this. I need that to be quite thin as well. If you take it from the lid, then it, it just means you don't have too much. I'm, a, I'm using the big pots where I've got big pots, so because I don't like having loads of pots open at the same time. Now what you can do is, once it's finished moving around, you can stop it moving by heat setting it, yeah? But once it's finished moving around, you can then go on again with another coat of paint to highlight if you want to. Or you can um, just go on with a darker shade. You know, just, just play with it. This is why the small, I think the smaller images are worth their weight in gold. So you can hone your skills. And um, you know, know where you're going with it. I'm not going to do this absolutely accurately because I'm going to miss this as well. It's just to show you, there's not really a lot of extra skills involved, not with the way I do it anyway. And then you can move on to um, being, a, you know, more precise and doing some beautiful projects like the DT have done and like Kate um, will show you. So just three paints on this one. So we use the bluebell in the background. We've used the new green that I can't remember, the forest cut grass. From the one day special and then we've used purple rain or translucent so let's give that a bit of a blast as well 
so you see I've got paint coming through that's why you don't you don't want to do it on um, just on your craft sheet and move it around let's just give it a little bit just to get that purple moving okay so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna put that to one side and we'll come back to it in a little while when we finish let's not put that on the same bit okay and we'll do a little card just clean that up okay because I want to show you this background that I've got going on all right let's just grab my little kit Hi Carolyn. <laughs> yeah, we just have to be patient with the Royal Mail, don't we, at the moment? Right, so this is a piece of um, pink frog uh, uh, smooth card. And as I mentioned before, when we get our, sometimes, not always, but sometimes when we get our stamps, we get them uh, in the solid rubber. And I know that when I was on her chanda recently, Janice, uh, with the, um, you know, the little co collector's edition uh, stamps, which aren't all scrolled, you do want to trim them a little bit. And Janice was saying, is there anything you can do with the extra rubber? Well, yes, this is what you can do with the extra rubber. And this isn't my idea. I, I, I got this from uh, my friend Sue Wilson years and years ago because all um, mounted rubber stamps used to come, um, so you had to cut them out. It's, it's, it's one of my pet hates. I absolutely hate cutting out stamps. I'm always scared, probably like you guys, of undercutting. And if you undercut, then you're not going to get such a good image. Um, but having said that, if you do get a stamp plate, and I know there are some manufacturers which still do supply um, stamp plates that you need to cut out, then you can make yourself a background. So this is, I've just put this on a block. Um, you can, the beauty of having these is if you keep them, you can make yourself a long one. You can put them on a longer block. You can put them on a round block. You can put your background will be dictated by your the shape of whatever block you're using which is just is just a fabulous thing to do i've never bothered with it before to be honest but um it's definitely a useful thing to do right so what we're going to do is just take a scrap of paper and like i said i've got a piece of pink frog card here and for my background i'm going to use the golden meadow versus fine clear it's like a, an off yellow and we're just going to ink it up, it's rubber, so you're just going to ink it up just in the normal way. Now what you do need to bear in mind is that um, because you've been paying attention to your stamp and not to your waist, some of these might be undercut and so some areas won't actually stamp that, that well. But that's fine because it's a background so it doesn't really matter at all. So if you get any of the collector's editions from Indigo Blue, save your bits of rubber. Right, let's, let's just have them not, not actually that, that well inked just there. Okay. Right. Obviously you could put this in a stamp press, but then you, you'll have to just reset it every single time. Let's see. Let's go there. So I'm going to give it a really good press because I know that I've got a little bit of a just there. A bit of an undercut a bit and I'm sorry if the camera's waving whittling about but I'm trying to get good impression I mean this is verse fine clear so had I have dusted it with an anti-static bag first then I could add embossing powder afterwards but I've got some of that are dry I think we call that a day there we go so there's my background it's cool isn't it Just like that. From rubbish. <laughs> uh, 
That makes me happy. <laughs> I can say I can't claim it at all. It's not my idea. But obviously, you'll be starting to if you if you want to do this, and if you've got rubber that you're cutting out, you'll perhaps be thinking about the shapes that you're cutting in your waist, and it'll get really really obsessive. Um, but uh, yeah, so 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 that's that one, and I've got one that I've already is already nice and dry and smooth. <coughs> and uh, we're going to take the same stamp that we've used uh, in the panel is the milk thistle so I'm really just giving you a couple of different ideas to do with the um, same design really with the fabric and the, um, the stamp um, so as I said you could um, stamp this onto other fabric um, I say Kerry used um, uh, an old uh, pillowcase and you can use the microfiber um, uh, fabric from um, pink ink I'm saying a lot of erms today, trying to think my brain's not working. Anyway, so we're going to go for um, a Versafine Clear. I'm going to, I think I'm going to go for Pinecone rather than Nocturne for a change. So Pinecone's a nice dark brown. So you can see I'm not very good at cutting stamps out. I hate cutting stamps out. I like to just go. So you guys will get a nicely scrolled one, which will be really nice for you. I'm a little bit heavy handed so that's why I don't like cutting them out right I think I've gone straight with my um, stamping my ink at my um, positioning of my stamp so I'm going to put it there I think I've moved it so it might be a bit blurred okay oh, that's pretty good oh, see that's why I don't like cutting my stamps out Right, let's, should we go again? Let's go again. We'll put that to one side. I can always use the other side. Let's go again. So I would now actually probably cut that down. Knowing that I've over, over um, inked, I would cut that off. Right, let's go again. See, we all do it. I could actually cut that leaf out and decoupage it up, actually. It's not wasted. Clean that edge off. Right, that's where I did it. I'll do it somewhere else this time. You watch, and then I'll give up. Right, let's have a look. Don't press so hard on the edges, Julia. Probably won't happen if you use a stamp press you, you're li least likely to do it there we go that'll do me second one's a dream <laughs> giraffe giraffe oh yeah 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 absolutely yeah Norma it is a like a giraffe but like I say when you're cutting out your uh, pieces then you'll think about um, how you actually cut out your waist so um, I'm not going to make you watch me colour that in because you just watch me colour it in um, when I was uh, doing the fabric. So in exactly the same way that you colour in with your fabric, uh, you can colour in with the paints on your card. So you can see that one I've actually stamped and painted in. And this is the other green that's in one of the sixes. This is the racing green. And then on my purple here, I've actually mixed together the uh, mulberry bush and I've mixed some of the Stroke of Midnight in to make that purple that I've used there. Just because I didn't actually realise that Purple Rain was on the show and also uh, obviously the green is already mixed um, anyway. So obviously matte and layer and, and, and you, you're good to go, right? So we come back to our piece of fabric that we had drying and let's see how it's going. You can see now that that's kind of just pulled out 
so we just give it a blast And then if you want to fry it, I suggest you, I know that when I did my um, fabric panel on my bag, and, and, and I, I know Carolyn was sat with me at the time, I had a lot of trouble getting mine to fry. But if you just try and only have one piece of, um, what do you call it, thread coming out at once, then it does tend to fry a lot easier. This is still a bit damp as well. So if you go one at a time, then you get a nice fry to it. That's if you want a frayed edge. If you don't, you can, you can of course, stitch. You can stitch onto card as well as stick, stitching onto fabric. You don't have to uh, fray the edge if you don't want to, or you can do both, obviously. My sewing machine is my nan sewing machine that I've had for years which is buried in the corner of my craft room there's no way I can well even if I dig it out I've got nowhere to put it so um, I won't be sewing anytime soon but hopefully you can see that it does fray really easily now, that's a little bit damp all I would do with this now is um, I've got a little bit of card pink frog card and a piece of black card as well and I'd finish fraying it and then I'd pop it onto my card and that would be again another piece of art that you could frame if you wanted to um, you could even just add some I don't know cross stitches or something instead of pearls if you wanted to um, but but that's where we're going with that obviously it, it just needs a little bit more work and a little bit more drying uh, to finish it so hopefully that's given you a little bit of an insight as to a couple of the things that you can do with the big kahuna bundle because we're talking stamps as well. Um, so uh, thank you for joining me and uh, don't forget to tune in to Kay at 6pm this evening and again at 8pm and then I'll be there tomorrow at 8, 12 and 4 showing you um, more variations of the same thing really but um, I've got quite a few uh, samples to or demos prepped uh, to show you and we'll just um you know any, any questions just email in why have i got a, i've got i've got an angry face again i think it's really funny when i get an angry face coming up there's another one are you doing it on purpose <laughs> anyway thank you for joining me and uh, there'll be another facebook live next wednesday at 11 uh, and we'll be looking at trudy howard's new release um, thanks for joining me and um, stay safe and I'll see you soon.